Greetings, Radical Ones! We are here with another episode of the Radical Retro Rewind Podcast, and your super retro radical brothers are here today because David is back for another review. Hello, hello. So, David, this was our fan-requested movie of Ruthless People by Miss Jeanette. Hello, Jeanette. Hi! Thank you for requesting this movie. I actually have it on DVD. And now I do, too, because it was so fun. Funny, I ordered it and it was very cheap. It was like five dollars. Well, it's, a, it's an old movie, but it's cool. It's an old movie, but it's not easily available online, honestly. It was like a struggle to find it originally, but then they do have it on Amazon Prime for anyone for $3.99 to rent. Which is actually what I ended up doing because of the fact yeah. that I don't even have a DVD player anymore. I think it got sold in our last yard sale. Plus, I have a collection. It, everything must be like locked away from the move still though, right? Yeah, I have a lot of stuff that's still in box. So, Ruthless People, this movie is 1986. This is starring Bette Midler, Danny DeVito, Judd Reinhold, Helen Slater, and Bill Pullman. So your history with this movie, David, clearly you knew this prior to us recording today. You always mentioned it was one of your favorites. Or I love it. So there's a bunch of movies from the 80s particularly that star a lot of like what I would call crossover artists, either people that are from television that did actual movies or singers who kind of cross over into, they kind of do like the, the triple threat, singing, acting, writing sort of a thing. Yes. And Bette Mittler is one of them. Cindy Lauper is another one of those people. Shelley Long from Cheers. Madonna. Madonna. Well, yeah. I mean, listen, we should do Desperately Seeking Susan. And I mean, I still love that movie. I don't care. You know what? When you watch certain movies, you're not expecting Academy Award winning performances from a pop star that just it doesn't even, you know, hasn't even learned their own craft of singing. So really... <laughs> People are so, like, judgmental. But anyway, yes. Yeah, so Bette Mittler starred in a string of movies that I absolutely love. Everything from Beaches to Ruthless People. There's a lesser-known movie called Drowning Mona, which she almost plays a similar character, but not because Mona really is a mean, mean kind of a lady, where in Ruthless People, that plays sort of a... I don't want to say... in Like, in Beaches. Okay, so in Beaches, for example. And again, I'm yes. sorry, Jeanette, I'm jumping around, but you know I do that. In Beaches... She kind of has the same, like, avant-garde, weird Lydia D. Well, Catherine O'Hara, I'm sorry. Who is Lydia's mom? Oh, her mother. Know. Yes, yes, I know. It, it, the same kind of, like, house. Everything is, like, that angular, weird, ultra-modern furniture. The same, it's almost like she's part of the same character that she is in Beaches with, like, the whole, like, again, that was the time period. It was in this ultra-modern. So even at the time, David, I wrote a note here that the colors of that house was, like, the set of In Living Color mixed with Pee Wee's Playhouse. That, but honestly, if you look at <laughs> when if you look at Beaches when she becomes famous and rich in Beaches, Bette Midler's character, she has kind of like that very avant-garde, very ultra-modern, psychedelic. She has a picture, like an Andy Warhol style of pictures of herself. Not, not for me, very tacky. Not for me. Is this Bette's really her taste that they're incorporating in all these movies? I don't possibly? know. I don't know. But no, I just think it's a time period that it's in. Like, it, it's always like in the 80s when there's a movie, someone who's like ultra rich always rich. Lives, in a, lives in these very like bizarre cold but yet super pops of color crazy ultra modern houses it, but honestly it's a time period Nagel the artist Nagel oh. uh, you know Duran Duran cover still my heart Nagel but anyway so anyway ruthless people but just to add to David's point in Drowning Mona Danny DeVito also starred in Drowning Mona so I wondered I looked earlier I wonder if they were trying to do that parallel of trying to take the success of ruthless people this movie, Drowning Mona, actually came out in 2000. I think there is heavily inspired, like you're saying. This movie, to sum it up before we get into it, is a millionaire named Sam Stone, played by Danny DeVito, and his wife Barbara, who he hates. Because we find out he basically, what, married her just to inherit her fortune from her father. Oh my god, he marries the bosses to move up the ladder. And the man is like, because the man's on his deathbed. But then he's like, and he keeps holding on, and holding on, and getting sicker, and sicker, and older, and older, and he never dies. And then finally he does. He's, this is what he's like talking about with his mistress, 
that's how the movie opens up, right? He's talking to his mistress. Named Carol. At, at a, a lunch, at a table someplace, talking about why he married his wife to begin with. But it's just, only Danny DeVito can come up with, like, the way he says things, it's like the same when he was in Romancing the Stone. Like, arrogant, kind of, I don't know what you want to say, like, kind of, like, I don't want to say New Yorker, but, like, kind of guttural, kind of rude, but, like, Joe Pesci sort of, like, vibe going on, but not, I don't know. Even going back to Taxi, when he played in Taxi, yeah. he was always that, like, But it, But he's character. probably... probably the nicest guy he even hates the way she licks stamps david and the way she <laughs> makes and she eats her food so i'm sure and snores oh my god he hates her he breathes hates the way she her. breathes but so yeah so he hates his wife he's having an affair you find that he's married her only for the money <laughs> And, um, yeah, that starts the movie. It starts right into it, like David says. And then from that, it goes right into the plot that he's going home to literally murder her this night. Tells the girlfriend, Carol. But when he goes back to that beautiful mansion with all that beautiful modern furniture, she's already <laughs> missing. And then he gets a phone call and tells him that Barbara's been kidnapped. And if he informs the media or the police that they will kill her. <laughs> And the first thing he does is call the police and, and there's like a media <laughs> storm. <laughs> thinking and praying that he does not have to kill her himself. So we find out the kidnappers are Ken and Sandy. So they want revenge on Sam for stealing Sandy's fashion design. So this is really the catalyst for this whole thing of the kidnapping. So these characters are actually very nice people. The husband actually, I think, is, is his revenge is besides knowing that this man made millions of dollars off of his wife's idea. What is it? The, the mini skirt? The, the mini skirt? Yeah, the, mi the mini the, span the spandex mini skirt, mini skirt king? king. Besides that, he also, I believe, is enraged internally because of taking it from his wife. Like he loves his wife. This is their very sweet couple. Despite the fact that they kidnapped this Barbara, <laughs> but they're actually very nice people. Like he's talking about being ruthless, and meanwhile, he's taking a spider and putting it out on the porch instead of killing it. And then he's talking about I need to be more ruthless. Then he ends up going out back outside and squishing the spider to prove <laughs> that he's ruthless. The wife is very meek, very sweet. Yes. The other thing is you see them working these very mundane jobs. He, like, sells stereo equipment, whatever, like Sears sort of a thing. Like, you see Richard's bargain, or whatever. It's like bargain bobs, bargain and, Carl's. And, you, and she's in, a like, a waitress outfit. So you can tell they're struggling financially because of the fact that they could have been, you know, they could have been well off. And we see even at Ken's job that he is not willing. He, he sells stereos and things like that. He's not willing to talk people into the higher priced item just because it's a higher price. So we're seeing that he is a good person regardless of this kidnapping. So the reveal, David. So they kind of build up to the reveal of Bet. They <laughs> literally take her out in this sack and they're trying to bring her down the basement where they're going to hold her and they drop her down the <laughs> stairs in this sack. But David, she is like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Bet Mittler plays a slayer. Even in this bag after falling down the stairs she's able to like strangle him and like fight her way out I love I love that every interaction she she is so vicious the way she attacks them in every possible way she <laughs> grabs his crotch and like squeezes his balls and like she's like constantly beating this guy up and she's belittling the wife that she's belittling them all oh my god so yeah the so they quotes, they, the quotes <laughs> in this movie the best the best part oh my god are we jumping ahead but the best part is when she tells them what's gonna happen to them because they kidnapped her we already got the part about the what the movie's about. It's a rich guy who stole an idea, married married a woman, the boss's wife, to get her money, and now she's been kidnapped, and he really hates, the, the husband hates her anyway. The original VHS cover, which our friend Miss Jeanette actually posted on her page, which we will be posting on the Radical Retro Instagram, but the original VHS cover, I remember seeing in Blockbuster, David, and it almost looked like a horror movie because <laughs> it was Bette Mittler, a character of Bette Mittler, but it's between these two characters with with Donald Duck masks on. So uh, growing up, I always was like, what is this movie? I was almost thinking it was like a horror movie, like one of those <laughs> cheesy, you know, like VHS covers of like Mother's Day or something like that. Like they're torturing and kidnapping <laughs> Ben Hitler. <laughs> It, but, wasn't Howard, it wasn't Howard the Duck, I can tell you that. But they put these duck masks on, not to reveal their identity, and Bette actually says, you know, unveiled her face. She said she's been kidnapped by Huey and Dewey. My husband does business with the Mafia! When they track you down, you, your entire family, everyone you ever knew, will all get chainsaw enemas! And that's not all! Oh my god! I've been abducted by Huey and Dewey! Duck and she tails, just... woo! <laughs> 
she just continues to belittle them, which is it's so funny. So funny. The whole movie's so funny. But the, one of the best parts is when she tells them what that's going to happen to them when they're in the electric chair, and she's going, I, "I can't even, I can't even mimic it." Or when she says the gas chamber or the firing squad, and she's like, "You're just holding on." <laughs> Sometimes they miss the arteries, and you're kind of just <laughs> laying there bleeding, <laughs> waiting to die. Or the gas, and she's like. <laughs> That's not my problem. It's yours. Supply these things and I will tell the jury you acted humanely. It might make the difference between life and the chair. <laughs> or the gas chamber. <laughs> firing squad, they miss all the major arteries. Bang! And you don't die right away. You kind of just hang on. Bleeding! Bleeding! We're going back to your point again when Ken goes down at one point and she tells him nice butt and then tells him that he's gonna be the bell of the ball. In at, prison. In prison, but they won't see his beautiful face because he'll be too busy being bent over. Jeez. And he tells her that she should write children's books because she has <laughs> such a beautiful way with words. <laughs> so there is that kind of banter between them two. More so more so the husband with than the wife who is also she was supergirl right completely right right she's not the strong character in this movie she is like the meeker her name is sandy in this and matter of fact throughout this movie she wants to win her friendship in a way like she's so taken back that she doesn't like her because she, she's one of these people that are probably so nice that people someone pleaser. not liking her is like what but you but um, you kids so david her, so also really. at the but we feel this must have been more ken's idea the husband because this is not really her speed. Well, that's what I was saying, because, I mean, literally within such a short period of time, she's like, I can't do this anymore! So, okay, well, the best part is also they tie Bette Mittler, chain her to a bed, but what they do is they chain it to the bottom of the bed, so all you have to do is lift the bed up, of the leg does. of the bed, and she goes, and she goes upstairs, and then she's calling the police. She's on the phone with the police, they're trying to get her, and she's, the police must ask her where she is, it's like, how the hell do I know where I am? <laughs> that's right. But he sees that she's gotten out, and he pulls out this gun which turned out just to be a lighter wait 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 no she hits him in the face and he actually takes instead like he's gonna chloroform her again to not yes yes he uses, yes. The, he uses the cloth on his face because she punches <laughs> him in the nose and he's like getting all half you know knocked out and then she tries to attack him with a, a mixer a hand yes! mixer and then she kicks him in the cr in the balls. Like, okay, right? She needs. But she him. trips over her own chain, so she gets in prison again. She she throws a, a mug at his head. She's just beating him up. That's what I'm talking about. This woman is a fighter. Uh, everything fight. is a weapon, including a hand mixer. Just Cue so that you know. beautiful music. <laughs> Everything's a weapon with David. Or what else would you have grabbed in this kitchen, Dave? And there's a whole there's cookie a whole jars, here. cookie jars. I would have went for a knife though at some point, but I mean anything that's heavy that you could throw at a person. Okay, so let's be honest. If you're ever in a situation, if someone doesn't have a gun, let's say, and I, and I'm being all honest, if you're in a situation where someone is going to attack you and you're physically outmatched by somebody, pick up an item that you can propel at the person that you can use to to hurt them, to slow them down. You know, like it's so silly. Like we see these horror movies. You know, I, which one, I don't know, you did Scream recently, so yes. Scream, was there not a part in Scream where, I don't know, it was Sydney, whoever, like, she was on the stairs and she threw something, like, that was on the foot of the stairs, I think, and knocked it down? Those are the type of things you need to do. You need to find something that you can physically pick up that will hurt the person. And as they're flinching, you either run or you pick up the next item and you Yes, get the next it. item ready. Exactly. Like, don't, like, if, if, I mean, even if, I'm not saying a tissue box. I'm, okay, so I'm in an unfinished room. I have a large computer screen a laptop, a printer, and a few other things. If I throw this HP printer at you and hit you in the head with it, it's going to hurt. And then in the meantime, I'm going to take the big, big computer screen and hit you again with it. I mean, let's be honest. Like, okay, we're not throw. I'm not going to throw the mouse at you or the tissue box I have here, but use whatever's around your surroundings. And I mean that from from a perspective. Golf a bit, anybody. Yes. 
that's listening is ever in a situation where someone's trying to harm you. Yes, they still might get the best of you, but you need to have a fighting chance. That's it. I mean, you could literally take the curtain rod off of the of the of right the behind thing you, I and, and dick them with it. I mean, it, I hope it's not a cheap one, but it might bend. But you know, still a chance. So you anyway. know what? This actually is right up your alley, David, because at one point Barbara, the character, tosses a broom like a spear at him. <laughs> <laughs> so this movie, actually, this is David's. Movie. I am that Mitler. David is Bette Mitler. <laughs> Exactly. Aside from the main plot, <laughs> Danny DeVito's mistress is also planning to, to double cross him. Exactly. So this movie has a lot of, honestly, even till the end, there's a lot of ruthless what people. Ifs. Ruthless people. Ruthless people, but and her boyfriend, who she's going to double cross Danny DeVito with, is oh, a young Bill Pullman looking fantastic. Lone Star, him. Lone That's, Star. I think he looks great as a blonde, honestly. I think you like him. Oh, I, I always had a soft spot for Lone lo, Lone Star, for Lone Star in Spaceballs, but I love his character too because he plays not to be mean, but an, a dim-witted person. And a matter of fact, at one point later on, the mistress Carol said. Says, oh my god, the quote was so good. Something about there's being a complete idiot that's hard to come by, and then she looks <laughs> at the guy, and she realizes, oh, the guy I'm with is probably a complete idiot. But, okay, so the plot that she has is she knows that Danny DeVito is going to kill the wife tonight. So she sends the boyfriend, his name is Earl in this, Bill Pullman, to record the murder. He goes, and he's, he, a car pulls up in this, I have to say, it's a beautiful sunset in the background of Bill Pullman. He's got his 80s camera stand all set up, his freaking Miami Vice white blazer with his pink shirt underneath, and he thinks he's recording a murder, but it is literally the chief of police, who is played by the principal, Dr. Samuels, from Head of the Class. Okay, yeah. Another 80s throw out there. But he's hired a prostitute, and he wants this prostitute to scream a lot. So, Bill <laughs> Pullman, as <laughs> Earl, believes though the screams... So are. he he is, he is, besides being dim with he's also, I guess, you want to say, like, I don't know what Innocence? the word. And, and, I guess, and it, like, he's he's too afraid to watch the actual murder, even though he's recording it for devious purposes to extort money from somebody. He can't look at it, and he hears the screaming as this man is making love to this lady, and, you know, there's, again, gratuitous nudity. This is the 80s. You see a breasted yeah, woman hanging, hanging out the window, but he doesn't see that because he thinks that she's being murdered and then he goes back to the girlfriend and he's like and he would bring her to the point of almost killing her and then he would stop and he would do it again which again it is a forever. very sex it's, it's a sexual Two reference minutes. to him yeah Two it's, it's a, a sexual car. reference it's a sexual reference of making love to somebody and then slowing down and then going again. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, David. I mean, none of us have any experience with prostitutes. But when she says, I'll scream for you, it's your money. I have never heard anyone in the world scream like this woman screams in this I mean, it was you, a part. Right? Let me explain something to you. Never been with a woman. Women do a lot of things to make men feel superior. Believe me, that's all I have to say, and I'm but that and I'm was not a woman. Over the top! Oh this my is your, god! She's saying you're paying me. Maybe she wanted a five star rating that's on Yelp. That's true. Well, even though there was no Yelp. <laughs> You know, word on the street is you scream with the best. Every, of them. Okay, I'm gonna do another tie into another desperately seeking Susan when Roberta Rosanna Arquette is, is arrested because he thinks she's a prostitute, but she's not, and she's in the car with another prostitute in the back of a police car, and she has birds because she's a magician's <laughs> assistant, and the prostitute next to her goes, "How do you use the bird?" <laughs> So, clearly, well, there's, I, there's a market for everything. Well, to tie that in, at one point, Carol, the mistress, goes to Danny DeVito, Sam's place for his birthday, because she's still trying to play along with this, this whole thing that she's with him, just to get the money that he's... It's a whole thing! It's a whole thing! Hopefully you guys can keep up. But he asked for a dog, or big dogs at one point, and she thinks he wants her to sleep with the animals, so go, tying it back oh, to God. them. Oh, God. But he Animal just wants cruelty. to kill his wife's dog, because he hates the poor wife so much that so pees on everything sam as sexually provocative as i like to think i am i'm not asking you to screw the dog carol it's for me and i can relate i have little dogs that pee on everything i actually had to get diapers for my chihuahua mix dog mr bro because i think he's gonna pee on my new furniture so no ruthless people, ruthless people! 
So th this is film. She decides that her and her boyfriend are they're going not going to gonna watch it. They're not, they're not going to watch, watch it. They're going to send them because the boyfriend's like, please don't watch this. This is too graphic. You can't see this. It's horrible. So she sends a videotape of it to Danny DeVito to blackmail him anonymously. He calls her and is like, I got the video you sent me. And she's like, what do you mean? Because she's trying to pretend that she doesn't know. And he's like, who else would send me this video? It's amazing. I'll, I'm going to do this to yes! you too. You're going to scream. So now... She thinks that he is plotting to kill her because he knows that she was going to blackmail him. He's going to kill me. This woman has a very, like, southern... Her name is Anita Morris, the actress. She's very, like, a southern sexy woman. Like a Blanche Devereaux kind of thing. But in the meantime, so let's also go back to what's going on with Barbara. She is taken to exercising in the basement where she is because she... Is, but why is I, that the only thing that's on? I noticed that. Like, was those maybe tapes? What she does. Or was that just what was on the TV? Because it was continuous workout. I, I don't know, Barbara, but I can relate. Thank you. So you see her almost like a montage at times of her exercising. Yes. Like like she's Rocky running up the steps or like cue she's music. Off the, she's hanging off the basement ceiling at one time doing push-ups. Oh my Pull god, this is my favorite. She, the broom in between the two chairs. And she's like pulling herself up. Or the jugs of water. The cheese jugs of water. Too? She used paint cans. Oh, paint cans, right, right. Honestly, that is a good exercise if you have nothing else. That's why I've always read, so. I don't know because I'm not exercising currently. Well, we find out that she has been to several fat farms and she was only able to lose six pounds. So this is something that's truly important to her. But we do see that they're not mistreating her. She's not really eating because she says, am I gonna eat poison food from, you know, this place? To go back just one second, I just wanna add that when Bill Pullman's character dropped the videotape off, he didn't wanna hear it just in case she plays it. He goes in the bathroom and puts the hair dryer on. Mm. And David, you know, I've been I've been known to put a hair dryer on to warm myself in the coldest nights. Yes, I know. It's, and what you, was the you dust bust? You were, you were ahead of your time. What? What was the dust buster that he... I swear twice he was, like, in bed with the Mistress Carol. He was, like, dust bustering her? Maybe it's some kind of sexual thing, like it's suctioning. If the dust buster sucked that well, even in... The, <laughs> those no. things never picked up anything. It never worked very well, no. Remember the dirt devil? Anyway. Barbara is exercising and Sandy notices. She's like, you must have lost about 20 pounds. And Barbara's like, what? Wh wh what, are what are you saying? And instantly that makes Barbara feel great. And also kind of almost endears her to Sandy for noticing because you can, you can bet that Danny DeVino never says anything nice to her when they're together. And we should say that they keep calling Danny DeVito to set up new drops to exchange for his wife with money. And they keep lowering it down because he doesn't, he doesn't want to save her. He wants her to die so he can just inherit everything. So he's not paying it. He's being a jerk to them. Like the police are there and he's taking the call on a private line saying, no, I don't want to. I'm not paying that. Oh, that's too much money. And so they keep lowering the amount, lowering the amount. Oh my God, there was a gross part. But like when, before she lost the weight, she was talking about how she gave Sandy a list of things that she needed. It was yes. like, firm well, something, you know, was like- Was it pearl cream? Yeah, it wasn't pearl cream. And then she used to get urine injections to lose weight. I'm sorry. And she said, does it work? And she's like, but yes, that's some, it works. <laughs> that's something that the Kardashians probably do. So I really <laughs> shouldn't complain or say anything. But anyway. So then she's like, I've always wanted to be thin and wear beautiful gowns. And Sandy's like, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'll be back. Don't Just... go anywhere. Yeah, like, where's she gonna go? And you find out, then she finds out that Sandy is a designer. She comes up with these amazing designs for the 80s for that time. Oh, my God. Even in the 80s, though, Dave. Yeah. These were like gem and the holograms. Talk about like... Yeah, they were like gold. over the... Oh, they were over the top. Q, Q, Night of the Comet girls just want to have fun in in, 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 the, in the in the mall. I've been kidnapped by Kmart. So so yeah. So then she befriends Sandy. They start dress, that playing afternoon. Dress. Really, they start playing dress up. She has her mirror. And then Sandy mirror. Sandy finally confides in Barbara that they've had to lower the price because she's like, well, what is taking my husband so long? He loves me dearly. Why wouldn't he pay the ransom? And she keeps telling, well, we've lowered it. And then Sandy is that meek, mousy character, so she starts tearing up because sh her husband loves her. They might be poor, but yeah. she knows her husband loves her, and she finally confides in Barbara that they went from like half a million dollars down to ten thousand dollars. And Barbara's famous line is, "Say it, I love it that she's been kidnapped by Kmart." 
she was kidnapped by Kmart. She says it so well. I can't tell you how much I laughed at that line. Yeah. Was, Although, there's, was, is there any Kmart's left anymore? Online, I think. Yeah. Oh. Just See, like, um, Barbara, they Pier, went trendy Pier, now. They're online. Pier, Pier One is online, too, if anybody loves Pier Did One. Did you know? I went to Pier One recently. This is totally off topic, but talk about retro. Pier One must have bought, or someone who bought Pier One must have bought all the stores that closed in the last year. Because if you go to Pier One's website, they own Radio Shack, Dress Barn, and all these other, like, stores, like, older stores that have closed down, so. I loved Pier One, but some of the stuff was very overpriced. They were probably paying five cents for some poor child in, a, in you know child labor some country Definitely. and you are paying like a hundred thousand dollars for like a dresser or something so yes but remember those those bunny plates i bought you oh i still mm. use them till today i digress because we are just terrible i am sorry jeanette it's ryan's fault it's it all is. ryan's fault i'm gonna whip us into show so okay we should mention there is another plot that carol <laughs> sends the tape to the commissioner or the chief of police who was that gentleman from head of the class who was having sex with the prostitute. Unbeknownst to her, she thinks it's Danny DeVito's character killing the wife, and it's really a video of the police commissioner having sex with the prostitute, and they're both on two different fields. Carol calls and says, did you get my tape? And so it's funny because he's looking at it, and the conversation they're having, so there's two conversations that occur between Barbara and the commissioner or chief of police or whoever it is, and he's looking at the tape thinking he's being blackmailed because he's having sex with a prostitute and meanwhile she's wondering why this isn't enough evidence to get yes! Danny DeVito arrested immediately. She's like look at it look at it it's disgusting and he's like well you know sometimes men have needs. <laughs> oh my god she says something so like which is funny because he's a very heavy older man so older looking man so it implies that he thinks that she's like she's like it's disgusting like she's saying that he's yeah, disgusting. Yes, it's like, yes. like it's, his feelings are actually hurt. Meanwhile she's like thinking he's sympathizing with a man has needs and sometimes those needs basically right. like kill somebody. Right. And she's like horrified. In the meantime, we find out that at work, Ken is trying to be ruthless. He's sick of everything that's going on. And the police come to him at one point because they have figured out that Ken's car's tires match the tires outside Barbara's mansion when she was kidnapped. Now that the commissioner needs to arrest Sam, Danny DeVito, because of the video, he tells the police that Danny DeVito is the suspect now, and then they actually find photos of him and the mistress and a chloroform bottle outside. Because the dog that he hates led the police right to the bottle. So Ken gets away with that point, but then he goes back down, we see that there's a, a guy who wants to buy a stereo, and to mimic earlier, as opposed to him being the sweeter person trying to just, like, sell the cheaper one that's still better than the largest, more expensive one. He goes to talk this guy into the most expensive one, you know, refinance things to afford it. But then when he sees that the kid is with a pregnant wife, his morals come back to him. And it just again shows that these people are not killers, kidnappers in the They're true They're not the regard. ruthless people in the movie. So Barbara is released unbeknownst to Ken. So when Ken comes home, Sandy dressed like a glow wrestler, lovely <laughs> ladies of wrestling. Her hair was just like teased to the max. She tells them that they're going to basically be rich because they're going to go into business with Barbara. And he's like, you let her go. She's going to go to the police. What are you doing? So they have, they're, they're in a hurry. They're trying to like rush to get the hell out of the place before they're arrested. As the, the kidnapping is going on, there's also a, a serial killer on the loose that has been on TV, that has been um, advertised, you know, be in the lookout. He's in the, he's in the, the probably in the killer. area, the bedroom killer to please be aware that he's in the area. So while they're rushing to get packed up, especially the husband, it's really the husband that she still believes that Barbara's not going to do anything to them. They've bonded. So this the killer comes into their house because they leave the door open and he's looking around while they're rushing <laughs> in the bedroom to get clothing and get out of town, go to Mexico. Oh my yes. God. The plot, of, the plot of every escape from the United States, go to Mexico. So Bat Mittler comes back with looks like magazines. She's like, newspaper you know, actually. Newspaper. She sees the, yeah, she sees oh. the husband's mistress 
on it. So she goes into the house and meets up with the killer. And she's all they're... sweet now. She's like, oh, a hi. Woman. Are you are you friends with Ken and with... Sandy? And he's like, you remind me of my mother. He's like, tries to kill her. And meanwhile, she's backing up and trying to, this killer's coming after her. And Ken, Ken. steps in and he's fighting off the killer. And he's like, you remind me of my father. I hate my father or something like that. So he ends up getting pushed down the stairs in the basement. This one dies, though. He snaps his neck. This is another fit great scene. Oh my god, yeah, they go down the stairs. They go down the stairs and she's Bette Miller's like, he's dead. And Bette Mittler, very serious, she's like, he hated his mother. Or something. I don't know. Like, I'm not I gonna look like his mother. He hated his mother. And you like his father. He hated his father. She's like, I guess we know what our kid would look like. She's You're like, so Thanks. random, but... It's the bedroom killer. Ooh. He told me I looked like his mother. He hates his mother. He's dead. So, if I look like his mother, and you look like his father, this is what our son would look like. Pretty strong argument for birth control. Oh my god, what do we do now? So I guess, what, what did she say? Some people, I guess, should not... Did she say a, some a people should not... Yeah, she said a good reason for birth control. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my god but it's so random that's what i think makes this movie so funny like it comes out of nowhere like it's just like normal that they're she's talking like this after she was just kidnapped <laughs> yeah exactly so now they team up against sam the husband because they're becoming friends she realizes that sam stole sandy's ideas that he is only out for the money and because the mistress. police because of the, the and he's got a mistress so because of the police now make him prime suspect and he's arrested now sam is desperate to get her back so she basically she's got all these ideas put yeah. su make him go outside with oil on suntan him in a speedo cover him with bees sting him to death and then she's like and then castrate him cut his penis and she's showing like cutting balls off and throwing them over her shoulder <laughs> i love a woman, barbara a woman point. scorned a woman scorned so they team up to get the most money out of him so they realize well here's the thing is that sam cannot touch any of his wife's assets because she's not dead mm -hmm. So he has to pull all the money that they're demanding now of him from his own 401k, his his personal businesses, everything else. So so Ken we're actually very smart. It's like, well, how much money does he have? What can we get out of him? So they make this next call knowing that Sam desperately needs to get his wife back to prove he didn't kill her. So now that's another funny part of the movie oh where they the burger. They're, the tofu they have burger. they eat they eat tofu burgers, so that should tell you they're very like mild mannered vegan. So they're pretending to sizzle bar Barbara's skin when they're sizzling With the vegan cigarettes. patty on cigarettes and she's going, ah! Ah! The jewels! They want the jewels! I'm sorry! Gonna save the deposit box! And she's yelling all the, his assets that he has. And oh, you'd be surprised at the quality and quantity of information a lit cigarette can provide. So then there's a the part where he holds down. Yes, yeah, Sandy. If you think of it, Sandy was holding the meat down too often. It's just, She's it's like, pulls it up. <laughs> it's just hysterical. So they team up to get this money. <laughs> we should add earlier that they, they had threatened Danny DeVito and said the next time they see his wife she's going to be in the morgue and I just thought this was a hysterical scene because he goes to the morgue they say they find his wife the the mortician brings down the sheet on the body and it's an African American gentleman that's dead and it was just so random and he's like that's not my wife just so seriously I just laughed so hard and then they take him to the ne the woman that he was supposed to see and he says it looks like her but it's not her but I just thought that was another funny little moment in this movie before he doesn't need Barbara when he calls and he goes I thought you told me why my wife was gonna be in the morgue I was I at was the morgue she wasn't there like I was at the morgue, the morgue earlier yeah like it was just like so now Mistress Carol and Earl she calls the police again and she's like why haven't you done anything with my video I think the media would would really like to see this and he's like oh god why would you do such a terrible thing you'll ruin like, a man's <laughs> life that, well that actually goes back we actually kind of addressed that without saying that part it's like a man has urges and needs because there's only really two phone calls right to the chief of police but this is, yeah and this is the second one but this leads them to actually go to view the tape so they go to a you know 
like one of these Radio like, Shack or out, something. Like, or... Places where there was like VHS players and all these TVs up. And they put the, the VHS tape in one of the TVs. And it plays on every screen. Every screen in the building. And it's the, <laughs> the chief of police with the prostitute. So this is when Carol realizes that Barbara really was kidnapped. <laughs> it was the chief of police in the video and not what they think happened. Now Carol wants in on the ransom money because she realizes that the whole thing was true. Sam wasn't lying. There's a ransom for Barbara. And now the new plan is to be there for when the ransom is dropped off and she sends Earl to pick up the money. Sam is at a payphone. So Barbara calls again saying that the kidnappers put her on the phone. They want the Rolex! <laughs> They want the role. She wants everything. She's getting everything. He's like, how do they know about that? Your they rings, know. your rings, your yeah, rings. the rings. The rings, everything. And then she starts calling him all these names. And she's like, I'm sorry. They wanted me to call you that. They have a gun to my head. <laughs> so he doesn't care. He's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. The police are surrounding the payphone for the drop. So Ken arrives disguised as like a clown, like a bozo clown. Mm. Red nose, the, the cap with the hair. But Earl shows up as well. So there's now the three men there. Ken is saying, stand down the police. Or he has like this radio that he's gonna tell them to kill her. So the police allow him to leave. But he is being followed. He's being followed by the police. So this leads to really the climax of the movie. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Danny DeVito, he, he tries to pull the money back from... Yes. Because he's like, you have him now. Just shoot him, basically. I have his... And he has his own gun with him. Yes! I forgot that he has his own gun. That's right. He has his own gun. And then Parole is there too and he's so dim-witted that he doesn't understand that the police are shooting at him and he thinks that Ken is shooting at him. So he's just this poor man. He was blessed with looks but not. So the police are following him even though they've like he assured Sandy's like they said they weren't gonna follow me. Meanwhile there's more more cops following him than than uh than, the, than O.J. Simpson, Simpson and the Bronco. Okay, so Ken takes the briefcase and drives towards the waterfront with many police cars following him. He drives onto and eventually off of the end of the Santa Monica Pier. When the car goes off into the pier, the briefcase, I guess, opens and all this money comes out. So everyone on the pier is jumping into the yeah. water. And a matter of fact, Danny DeVito's character, Sam, throws one of the policemen over to get his, his money. money out of the water. Water as well. So the police search the water and bring up the car with the body of the bedroom killer inside dressed in Ken's clothes and disguise, which what a great idea. At that point, I had forgotten about what they did with the bedroom killer. And you're kind of like saying, why did they introduce this plot point? But this well, is Well, here's the funny off. part. This is where they redeem themselves as ruthless people. Ruthless people! Because they use the dead body of the bedroom killer to throw yes. off the police and say that he was the kidnapper the whole yes. time. And you also find out that they said the money's lost, but I just believe they opened a up a thousand couple thousand dollars yeah, are recovered, it says. I think that they threw a couple of thousand dollars in the car so it floated up so it looked like the thing was lost. Smart. Very smart. Ruthless, I would say. So there goes the title for the movie. But uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. And it's a nice ending. So. Well, although he has lost all his money, Sam holds out hope that Barbara will now be definitely be killed and he will inherit her 15 million fortune. However, I love it. She Barbara, pulls up. She pulls up and misidentifies the serial killer as her kidnapper. The police walk away in satisfaction. But Sam is still on the pier and he's taken back. And he notices how much weight she's lost. So she's kind of playing it up. She's kind of like, oh, he's no noticed? You think I'm beautiful? But she beats him up for all he did and that he didn't, you know, help her with the kidnapping and he pushes him into the water. And then later on we find that on a nearby beach, Ken emerges from the water in scuba gear, carrying the briefcase. Okay, this might be outrageous, but the whole movie is outrageous leading up to this. With the ransom cash, Sandy runs to embrace him and they are joined by Barbara all to celebrate on the beach together from beaches. <laughs> that was pretty much the ending. The kind of think of it we missed anything that was pivotal or funny. I mean, um, there's whole yeah. The police, movie. the police at the end are like they're t they're turning away, and he's like, "I wish after 15 years my relationship was that strong." <laughs> while she's beating him up and throwing him off the pier, um, 
<laughs> so you're led to believe that Barbara, Sandy, and Ken are gonna are gonna be really great friends, go into business, they're gonna have a great relationship. Barbara's gonna be okay. She's probably gonna divorce. I honestly, you, you, I mean, you go, you start with this movie with this nasty woman, but Barbara became so. I mean, maybe because it's endearing. Bettler. Yeah, but she becomes so endearing and a complete 180 that she's just so funny. And every time she had a fight scene, like David was saying, or like she has this like superhuman. What what did you equate her to? I don't want to spoil it. Like, oh, so does anybody remember the great Muppet caper? Which we have, David, we have to do that. And when when Miss Piggy is arrested and that she's she's walking back and forth in the prison and the and all the women in the penitentiary or whatever, like go for it, and she starts bending the bars and stuff. And again, I'm not tearing that middle of at all to a pig or being overweight or anything like that. She just has this brute strength. strength that comes out, which is kind of like the way Bette Mittler kind of plays yeah. off this brute strength out of nowhere that you're like, what? But I also think it's an attitude thing. It's like a real, you know, like the attitude that she projects. This is hysterical. It was really fun. It was really fun. I'm so glad it, that Jeanette suggested it because I have it, but you know, I have so many movies. My life is so chaotic with my kids and just life in general for all of us. And it was just kind of like one of those gems that I would suggest somebody. It's campy. It's funny. The one-liners are, and some of the like, you know, cruder humor that you wouldn't necessarily get away with as much these days. You still could, but you know, because I'm sure someone, you know, we're gay people. I'm sure someone would say, how dare you insinuate? He's oh, with it. the other. Yeah, prison I, I mean prison sex and these different things and like this is like very much like police academy but there's you know. also like a miss you're, you're on your suspense of what the hell who's gonna double cross who at this moment it, it is like a, a guessing game you led to the very end excitement of what's gonna happen i feel like i love a happy ending i love that they have a friendship now that things are going to be fixed that maybe sandy won't get, become the mini dress or spandex queen, queen you know because that ship has sailed but i do believe that she's gonna she have a really good life. She's gonna have a really good life, and they're gonna have a, a lifelong friendship. And Barbara will be okay, maybe with somebody who really appreciates her for her. She could go with Bill, and they literally walk off into the sunset on the beach. How do you beat that? I know it, you can't get any happier than that. I highly, highly recommend this movie. Like I said, it was not a horror movie, and not think it's a horror movie in blockbuster with two ducks kidnapping Bet Mittler. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. Hysterical. I, I yeah. It, I particularly love the eighty genre. I know that maybe that's dating me or that's being very. I don't know what the word I'm thinking of. Like naive of me, but. I love the 80s vibe. I love the the 80s flavor. I love, like, are we talking about, like, the artist crossovers? Yes, they do that now, too, but, I mean... Not I don't as know, much, not, I don't think. It's not, not, it's not the same. And even be pre-80s, like, when, like, the 50s, like, when Marilyn Diana Monroe Ross, had, to be, had yeah. to be a singer, had to be a dancer, you know, you had to do all these talent. I like the idea. Cher, sometimes Diana, sometimes yeah. it cross... Sometimes if you, they flop, and sometimes they don't, but I, I don't know. I think that we reminisce about things because it gives is a good feel. It's a good feeling. And this you know movie I mean? actually has extremely positive reviews, I have to say, from everything I've seen, positive, positive reviews. And Bette Midler is so talented that, you know, she really is an actress, too. She's a fantastic actress. So it works because she's not just one of those singers that might be a little wooden with their acting. Which great movie. Say. So great. Thank you again, Jeanette. I hope we did this movie justice. I know we did our signature all over the place because there's so much funny things. Like, my mind was just exploding with different scenes in this movie and how funny they were. That was this week's Radical Retro Rewind podcast. You can reach David at Universal Appeal 2020 all one word on the Instagrams and the Radical Retro podcast Radical Retro podcast on Instagram as well. You can also find us on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you do find us there. It helps so much with growing our audience and spreading the word about the podcast. And we are back every Friday with a new episode. Bye, all you radical people out there. And remember, sometimes ruthless people are truly just misunderstood sweethearts. Ruthless